highlight the slam dunk championship coming up next. Of course, we have three of the champions from the four slam dunk competitions here at Chicago Stadium today. We will have Spud Webb, who won in 1986, Dominique Wilkins, who won in 1985, and the 1987 defending champion, Michael Jordan. And Larry Bird just won for the Ladies third time in as many years the three-point long-distance American Airlines Sheridan's long-distance shootout 17 to 15 and once again Larry Bird it doesn't seem to matter who the competitors are whoever Bird has to face in the end if he has to hit the big shot he hits the big shot this time it was Dale Ellis who finished second. By the way, Ellis will get $7,500. Byron Scott finished third. He'll get $5,500. And Detlef Tripp will get $2,500 for finishing fourth. Well, it's still not a bad day's work, but again, I think uh, what Bird demonstrated is ability to make the big shot when it means something. He's done that continuously throughout his career. This is just a way to magnify his ability. And now in his own town, Chicago, Michael Jordan here to defend the 1987 slam dunk championship he won and we have an announcement for you we have just learned that ron harper of cleveland the youngster in his second year in the nba who was scheduled to play cannot play because of a foot injury we understand from the nba folks so there will be seven in the slam dunk championship instead of eight because ron harper with a foot injury has elected not to make that injury worse by competing in the slam dunk championship Before we get underway with today's dunking, as we watch the NBA around, we're watching an artistic exhibition here today. But the dunking in this kind of competition and game dunking can be very different. So let's look at this description between dunking for exhibition purposes and playing in a regular NBA game. Steve Jones looked into it, and here's his report. I looked into it. The slam dunk, the ultimate weapon in the NBA arsenal. In a game situation, it's a crowd pleaser. A showstopper. A momentum changer. It's what the people pay to see. But in a contest, even the great game dunkers like Tom Chambers can't always bring their home fans to their feet. Sometimes it's easier to dunk in a crowd than when you're standing all alone. Clyde may glide in a game, but even this Phi Slamma Jamma alumnus isn't holding the reservation in the Slam Dunkers Hall of Fame. The true champions know the difference. Creativity. Uh, I think that the dunk contest is a, is a it's a creativity thing and more or less instincts for me actually so i don't like to practice i just like to go out and do and let creativity take over um you know when i i tend to uh, whenever i practice something or plan something i tend to mess it up and um, so i'd rather just let it let creativity take over and instincts and those who do it with hard work like 1986 slam dunk champion Spub Webb, appreciate the creative artistry of Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. When you have the hang time of Dominique and Mike, you can create a lot of stuff that just comes to your mind when you're in there. Slam dunk contest are a whole... And that dunk by Jordan, one of those that helped him win last year. He's the defending champion, having outdunked Jerome Kersey, 146-140. And Michael calls that his kiss the rim dunk. He says he's added something to that and will be displaying it this year. Last year's competition was at Seattle, and it was intense itself. A surprise entrant and a surprise strong finisher was Jerome Kersey. Well, Jerome Kersey's a power dunker, and uh, when he gets a little bit of rhythm going, he can really excite the crowd. And the thing, though, about Michael is he has the ability to make it look like he's actually flying in the air with that great hang time and the great creativity, as Spud said, when he is in the air. That's a luxury that not many people have. 
We're going to come back, meet our judges, talk about the rules, and then get it on with the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship of 1988. Next. From Chicago Stadium, along with Rick Barry and Steve Jones, this is Bob Neal. Just moments before the 1988 Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship, let's meet the judges in today's competition. And the first judge we are going to meet is a man who is very well known to anybody who's a sports fan. He played six years with the Chicago Bears, four-time All-Pro. That is Gale Sayers, popular around the country, but particularly so here in the Windy City of Chicago. And Johnny Green, another 14-year veteran, began his career in 1959. He was known as Jumpin' Johnny Green. Had eight points in today's Legends game. And there is Gail Goodrich, 14 years in the NBA, member of the 72 world champion LA Lakers. He had three points in today's ball game. And two-time All-American from Notre Dame, veteran of 10 years in the NBA with the Lakers and the Royals, the Hawk Tom Hawkins. And Randy Smith, two-time All-Star, seventh-round draft choice, seventh-round draft choice for the Buffalo Braves back in 1971. Now, those judges will award points from 1 to 10 on each dunk. So when a, a competitor finishes his dunk, he can have as many. A perfect score would be a 50, of course. There are the rules, relatively simple. Two dunks in round one, three dunks in the semis and the finals. Competitors could replace a missed dunk, one per round, 0 to 10. If a player misses a dunk and wants to go with it, a maximum of five points could be awarded. 50 points would be a perfect score. Style, athletic ability, creativity. And it's kind of like figure skating. Uh, sometimes you may disagree with the judging. There's the prize money. First place, 12,005. Well, Bob, who's your favorite here? Well, my favorite in this one's going to be the defending champion, Michael Jordan. Steve and Rick, quickly, who's are yours? Fred Webb. Dominique Wilkins. All right, we'll see what happens when we return to the 1988 Slam Dunk Championship. Well, we've had an exciting Legends game that was won in overtime. We had an exciting Larry Bird victory in the shootout. And now the main event, the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship from Chicago Stadium. Let's meet the competitors today. There are only seven instead of eight because just prior to the Slam Dunk Championships, Ron Harper from Cleveland pulled out because of a foot injury. You're looking at Greg Anderson representing the San Antonio Spurs. He's 6'10", a forward from the University of Houston. Cadillac Anderson, he's a rookie. Okay, he is a rookie and he's the tallest competitor. Rarely do the big guys get in this anymore and I think perhaps the key for him will be maybe some unusual dunks, maybe like one or two balls at the same time to change it up, give himself a little bit of an edge. So Greg Anderson will be the only rookie in today's competition and oh is he facing competition from guys like Drexler and Kersey and Otis Smith and speaking of Drexler another Houston product a graduate of Phi Slamma Jamma we might mention one of the bright young stars in the NBA from the Portland Trailblazers well Fly Drexler a very exciting player having a great season one of those players as you see here is capable of doing these type of exciting things in ball games however in the competitions thus far he really has not been able to come up with the type of flair and creativity necessary to excite the judges. Now last year, this man, Jerome Kersey, replaced the injured Dominique Wilkins and took Michael Jordan to the finals. Well, and it was a close final for sure. Jerome Kersey has the ability not only to accelerate and really kind of levitate in a game situation, he's been able to do it in slam dunk contests as well. And an outstanding leaper who's appearing in the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship for the first time from the Golden State Warriors. This is Otis Smith. Well, Otis really is sort of an unknown entity here. Not many people have heard of Otis. Not many people have seen him. But he, he really possesses great athletic ability. You can see the move right there. It's a matter of what he is able to do in his first competition as far as creativity. And injured last year, he's back this year to defend a, a, a previous championship of 1985. The human highlights film. This, of course, is Dominique Wilkins. Well, this is Rick Barry's man, and uh, he is like a defending heavyweight champion. He wants to show that he can do it, and he's got the best variety, and really, he has the power to go along with it. He is a tremendous dunker. And he says this year he is on a mission for the season, for the slam dunk competition for the playoffs and hopefully for him and his Atlanta Hawks point of view for the championship of the NBA and Spud Webb the 1986 champion yes he is 5'7 in his sneakers and he captured the hearts of sports fans everywhere when he won with a couple of perfect 50s yes it was and I'll tell you one thing this is one of the 
great dunks he made to bounce off the glass and he slammed through but I'll never forget the high looping one that he caught and two handed it over his head he deserved to win it I don't know if he can repeat doing those type of creative things well they're on their feet in Chicago for this man their man the defending champion Michael Jordan this is what the judges are going to have to deal with this afternoon. Much like Spud Webb when he was in Dallas, everybody expects a 10 from Michael Jordan. And that's why Bob Neal picked him, because he always picks the home crowd favorite. <laughs> well, Michael Jordan, I can't wait to see if he actually does unveil his kiss the rim reverse all right well, i talked to jerome jerome said he's got a, a little something special he's cooked up and i asked dominique dominique says he has two new things i said what do you call him he said two new things <laughs> michael jordan last year's winner the defending champion in a game he's spectacular in the competition he's spectacular well he's, he's even more spectacular in the competition so michael jordan the nba's leading scorer again this year and the first dunker is going to be Otis Smith. They drew for the order of competition. They'll go in this order. Otis Smith, Jerome Percy, Spud Webb, Cadillac Anderson, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, and Dominique Wilkins will be the seventh dunker. Repeating once again, Ron Harper is not in the competition today because of a foot injury from the Cleveland Cavaliers. He dropped out just prior to the competition today so here comes our first competitor Otis Smith from Golden State is 6-5 his first dunk Otis Smith is a power dunker and you saw that right there and he usually likes to do a lot of his dunks with his left hand he came underneath the double clutch it looks easy but this is tough oh, I wish I could do it Steve but I don't think he's going to get a very high score there you see him make the move Turned about 180 in the, in, the, in the air, but he really didn't get it through with authority. Caught the rim on it. Well, we'll take another look at it, and you'll see. And perhaps he was oh, just a little tentative, but I think the key is getting that first one to go in. And the judges yes. give him a score of Jerome 40. Kersey. And Jerome Kersey will be next. In the first round, there will be two passes through the field of seven. And in other words, they get two dunks. They may replace a miss if they would like. So here comes Jerome Kersey, 6'7", 222 in his fourth year from... Portland and Otis has 40 points out of a possible 50. Well, again, I'm surprised Jerome, having been in the competition, uh, that was a terrific dunk. He had great height, threw it through, but really nothing out of the ordinary. We'll right. see it again right here, Steve, as he comes up. Now look at the height. Watch where his head is. His head is right up near the rim, throws it through without looking as he passes by. But again, it's just a two-hand reverse dunk. Well, I think Jerome is a little bit handicapped in the fact that he has smaller hands than some of the contestants. He wanted to make sure he got his first dunk in. He can't believe the judges didn't give him a better score. He gets 41. That puts him one point ahead. Remember, this is Kimberly. The top four, top four will advance. And Spud Webb will go third. 5'7", 135 pounds. He won the 86 slam dunk championship in his hometown of Dallas. Well, the key for Spud is getting that first one to go in. Now, I've seen him in other competitions, and when he didn't get the first one in, he struggled a little bit, but all the little people are rooting for him, including me. Oops, now remember, the competitors in the first round have the option to replace a dunk. Now, the big thing with Spud, and I really feel this could be a big factor, he had knee surgery. Now, when you have knee surgery, I think you lose a little something, Steve. He cannot replace I know I did. I didn't, have, I didn't have a lot to begin with, and I know I lost something. <laughs> so this will be the one that counts for Spud Webb. See, again, he had to get one in, and I think he's more concerned about that. His first one was more difficult and certainly would have got him a pretty good score. And that should not be uh, higher than what the other two competitors had. You'll see him come in, and I know what he's thinking. Like, two-hand, you know I'm going to get this one over the top and get myself a chance to advance. So Spud Webb Spud with another Webb's look here. 34. So it's just really a straight-in drive, just two hands straight-in, nothing really spectacular. He just needed to get it in, otherwise he had no chance at all. But with 34, I still think uh, that's going to kill him. Next. So none that makes him Greg third Anderson. out of the first three. None of those judges are 5'7". You know? <laughs> well, Stumpy Goodrich should be able to relate. <laughs> Now Greg Cadillac Anderson, we go from the shortest competitor to the tallest. He's 6'10", a rookie from the University of Houston from San Antonio Spurs. Crowd liked it. 
Well, I think the disadvantage for the big man, Steve, is that they don't look like they're doing as much because they're so tall and they're so big. They don't have that fluid motion, and they have to really come up with more creativity, perhaps, than the smaller players. So this is a nice one off the glass. He's up high, throws it through with great authority. But again, they just don't have the ballet-like movements of a Michael Jordan or a Dominique Milt Wilkins. As you take another look at it, gets good height and throws it through with, with great force. And what? now, Greg Anderson, who picked up a 42. So that Jordan. is the highest score so far. It's Anderson with 42, Kersey 41, Smith 40, Webb 34, and here is the defending champion, Michael Jordan. Well, the judges, they got a lot of pressure on them. They got to come through with big scores for Jordan. Of course, Jordan wants to put some pressure on everybody by trying to do something special right out of the gate. Oh, you call that special. Everybody in the stands flashing a 10. They had him up before he got there. <laughs> There's a nine. <laughs> All right, we go back and we'll take a look. And Jordan is saying, I got to put some pressure on. And, you know, again, you can't ever tell what he's going to do. He looked like he might have done a 360 or something, turned inside out, Michael kicks his legs out, and the crowd responds. And only a 47. <laughs> the crowd not real happy with that. I'd tell you what, I couldn't do that one in my dreams. <laughs> Michael Jordan said that he hoped to get to the finals with a dunk that was not as spectacular as the one he wanted to pull out then. So he did get a 47. He is now the leader. Number two out of the five who have dunked so far is Greg Anderson with a 42. So that's what Drexler's looking at. Clyde from Portland. Well, that looked a lot like the dunk that Michael Jordan did, and he had a little more authority throwing it down through. However, still in the air, he didn't take off out uh, as quite as far as Michael did, so it didn't look quite as good but it's still a terrific dunk there he goes brings the legs up windmills it through and a very nice dunk by Clyde Drexler I would think that should put him in second place right now as we take another look at it look at him get up get the legs up in the air get that flare to it you got to do something a little bit special and I like that one by Clyde and the thing that Jordan did was kick his legs out and we do hear now that 44 points have been awarded to Drexler. That puts him in second place. So Jordan with 47, Drexler with 44, Anderson with 42, Kersey with 41. So 41's the number here that Dominique needs to better in order to advance to the semifinal rounds. Dominique Wilkins from the Atlanta Hawks, the 1985 champion, 6'7", 200 pounds. Well, that'll draw a high score, I can tell you that right now. Now, we saw a reverse two-hander before, Steve, early in the competition, but not with the flair that Dominique just put on that, or with the power. And the quickness. He exploded into that basket right down there. You'll take a look. Now, watch out. I think what he does is really give it some juice. He cradles the ball, then spreads his legs out, and really throws it down. That's a good pop for Wilkins. And a 49 for Dominique Wilkins to put him in first place. So it's Wilkins with 49, Jordan 47, Drexler 44, Anderson 42. Now, Dominique Wilkins, he first dunk dunked when he was well. a five foot eight inch ninth Otis grader. Smith. And now, Otis Smith. This is the second dunk of the first round. They will combine the two scores of this first round, pick the top four, and then advance. Now, Smith pulled out all stops on that one with a 360 and a two-hand hammer over the top. Again, it doesn't look perhaps as spectacular because the legs don't go out, but again, the difficulty is there when you take a look at the 360. He's right there over the top with two hands. And a 47 for Otis Smith to go with his 40. So he has 87 total on two dunks. I think it's tough to be the, one of the first competitors. The judges take a while to warm up, I think, as well. You've noticed that the scores have gotten a little bit higher as we've progressed in the competition. So Otis Smith, in case you're not real familiar with him, he was drafted by Denver, then sold to Golden State. He had arthroscopic surgery last year, didn't get to play much. Kersey. With his second dunk. Yeah, the crowd didn't react real well to that, but that, that was a pretty nice move. But again, all of the flare and creativity was up high. He didn't do anything but the lower portion of his body. Here he goes and he jumps up. Rocks it from the right side to the left side. Throws it through with the left hand passing by. I mean, a, a pretty nice dunk. 
But again, his body's so straight, and it was all done with the hands and the arms, it wasn't oh, noticeable. 38. 38, not a good score for Jerome Kersey, and added with his first round 41, he has 79. He's been saying, I can't believe it. <laughs> that was one of my tougher ones, and my score got worse, and he really didn't make a mistake. Well, the judging, very subjective, obviously. The judges, uh, most of them for sure know what they're doing. Johnny Green, Tom Hawkins, Randy Smith, Spud Webb. Didn't get the good bounce. And that's why I was talking about that dunk he did when he won the championship. Everything had to be perfect. And you can see how difficult it is to throw the ball in the air, have it land perfectly, and be able to finish off the dunk attempt. And remember, there was only one attempt for a replacement dunk in the first round. Spud had to replace his miss. When he went, he does not get a replacement there. So Spud Webb can get a maximum of five on a missed dunk from the judges. But that'll virtually and almost certainly eliminate Spud Webb from the competition. 18. So he gets 18 points. Well, Rick, you were right. He had to have that perfect bounce, and he was looking at it, and the ball got a little bit too close to the basket, and it hit the support. So Spud is basically eliminated. Spud, the 1986 champion, and I think uh, your your point, Rick, earlier was apparently right. He, he did have a little problem with his knees, as we or maybe in the first of his two in the first round. Here's Cadillac Anderson. <laughs> Now, he does have a replacement dunk coming, so he'll get to try that again. Now, you know, Larry Nance was a big guy, and one of the things that Nance did to, to catch the judges, he dunked two balls at the same time. No other big guy seems to have uh, tried to do that. I see what I mean. Now, a big man with his size doing that, I mean, it's a dunk, but it really isn't anything special. Now, again, if he was coming off a double screen on the baseline in a game, would look great. it would look a lot different. Yeah, we'd have oohs and ahs, but right here we get, well, all the little guys can do that, so Anderson's probably not going to get a very good score from the judges. And his score is a low 34 for Cadillac Anderson, which will give him 76. Now, the leader thus far with the total score is... Otis Smith with 87. Kersey is second with his 79. And here comes Michael Jordan. Jordan had a 47 on his first dunk. Needs 41 points on this to be first in this first round. He'll get more than 41. Now, see, again, that was very similar to the Dominique dunk. But again, the legs are out. He double clutches the ball. I mean, things that catch the eye of the judges. Watch it again. Here he takes off. Now watch, the legs are out in the air. He pulls them up. He spreads them out. Pulls it from down low, up high for the two-hand dunk. That is, that's an appealing dunk. And kind of leans his head out of the way to give the illusion. I'm really up there. Watch, see, he's looking, and he gets his head out of the way and throws it over the top. And the crowd has booed the 47 <laughs> that Jordan was awarded. He has two 47s for 94 points. Remember, there are seven competitors. Ron Harper had to drop out today because of a foot injury. Seven competitors. The top four will advance to the semifinals. And right now, it is Jordan Smith. Kersey and Anderson with a 76. Clyde needs to do something special here. Again, it's a power windmill type of dunk. Let's see how the judges respond. Needs to beat a 76 to move into that top four. Well, I think he'll get a good score here. He won't get 47 or 48. I'd say around the 45 mark, but he comes in nicely. He'll turn sideways to the basket, takes off good distance away, and again, the legs, and then the big windmill, and throws it through. So, uh, Clyde being a little bit more creative than he has been in the past. And he gets a 44. So, Clyde Dreckler's 44 to go with his other 44 will give him 88 and put him in second place. It is as we go into the Dominique Wilkins dunk, Jordan, Drexler, Smith, and Kersey in that order. So, now the number to beat is 79 for Wilkins to advance. Oh! Now, that's a 360 with just a little authority, folks. And he does thing, it so effortlessly, Steve. That's what I was going to say. He does it so easy. You know, he just kind of walks his way in and then suddenly explodes and uh, goes into the air. And you'll see, well, let me see. I'll just take a little spin here and then watch the power. I think that's the most impressive thing about Dominique. He's got great jumping ability, great body control, but he also has tremendous Dominique power on the dog. Here he goes up. Now watch the strength. He just takes 47. it and boom, he fires it through. And a 47 for Dominique Wilkins, and that's going to put him out front with a 96. So it's Wilkins 96, 
Jordan 94, Drexler 88, and Otis Smith 87. Bob, I'll say one thing. I think the judges are doing a great job this year. They're not indiscriminately throwing out 50s like they've had in the past. The guys are going to really have to earn it, and they're saving their best for the next rounds. So it is Wilkins, Drexler, Otis Smith, and Jerome Kersey. We'll be back to Chicago Stadium in just a moment. From Chicago Stadium, the slam dunk championship semifinalists now will be Dominique Wilkins, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, and Otis Smith from the Warriors. Those are the four who will advance. The three who were eliminated, Jerome Kersey, Greg Anderson, and Spud Webb. And before we get started, I want to remind you quickly, this program authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association, solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this event, without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association, prohibited. And now this is the semifinals. It will be Jordan Smith, Drexler, and Wilkins in that order. They had a drawing to determine the order of the competition in the semifinals. Now in this round, three dunks for each competitor. Well, Jordan got out of the gate last time with something special and he wants to do the same as we start this round. Uh-oh, he's measuring off the free throw line. Jordan once said he thinks the perfect dunk would be a 360 from the free throw line. Okay, it is T minus 10 in counting to liftoff. <laughs> oh, they're on their feet at the stadium already. This is reminiscent of the ABA dunking championship and Julius Irving many years ago. Mission control ready for launch. <laughs> I brought Dominique to his feet. <laughs> Jordan says he likes to dribble the ball when he does a dunk as opposed to just running with it because he thinks that's really part of the rhythm and part of the game and he should do that. And a 50 for Michael Jordan on his first dunk of the semifinal round. Well, Jordan just taking his time and it appears, and I think this is what helps him, he accelerates right at the end, just misses behind the line, but still, that's tough to beat. There you see him coming at you as gets ready for launch. The plant, the tongue out, <laughs> the flare with the legs and the palm, and throw it through. Very nice, Michael. Little clutch with the right arm as he goes down the first 50 that's been awarded today. And next comes Otis Smith, the 6'5 guard forward from Golden State. Second year in the NBA. How would you like to be following this, Steve? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Whatever happens after that, you know, Otis Smith is in trouble. But Smith likes to come underneath the basket a lot. And so it's going to be real interesting to see what he can do to try to get the judges on his side. Missed his dunk. He can replace that dunk. Smith may replace that dunk. Now, he may replace this dunk if he chooses to, and I'm sure he will, because the maximum points awarded on a missed dunk can be five from the judges. So he'll try it again. Well, it's okay. It's just a matter of going through these uh, dunks for all of the contestants so that we can get to Dominique and uh, Michael in the final. Oh, he had to grab an errant rebound as he threw it off the glass with a beautiful jam by Otis Smith. That was impressive. Now, that was good considering the pressure that he had missed before coming behind Michael Jordan to take a chance and throwing it off the window and then catching it right. And again, power personified. And he gets a 45 from the judges that that score booed. It may be the error in throwing the ball might have detracted from his point total. I don't think so, Bob. I mean, I just think that coming behind Jordan, it's really hard for the judges to get juiced up again when they see that kind of an opportunity. Second year player in the NBA who had to follow Michael Jordan. That's called pressure. Now here comes Clyde the Glide Drexler. Drexler has is competing in his fourth competition he's a great dunker often not as good in this competition as in games well Clyde has tried this once before in another competition the sprint from the end let's see how he goes today misses the dunk he can replace it that is what happened when he tried this before because he doesn't have that ability to like Jordan to somehow hang and glide and pop it in. He likes to cock and throw, and he missed it. Greg Anderson, Spud Webb eliminated from the final competition. Also, uh, Clyde taking off a little further inside the free throw line than Michael.
Well, now that's a tough one. Why would he choose a free throw dunk after Jordan has electrified the crowd with a 50? That would be tough on a judge's mind, I would think, Steve. There aren't that many of them, though. I mean, you know, you think about these ducks, you've got to think about what you can do, and you've also got to think about how to impress the judge and get something down. Drexler just inside, they give him a 45. Well, again, he did not have the flair that Michael Jordan had. And it's a great dunk coming in from the slam camera, as you see. He's able to throw it through. Took off further inside than Michael. He was not deserving of a 50 because you compare it to what Michael did. So next up will be Dominique Wilkins. We're in the semifinals of the 1988 Gatorade Slam Dunk Championships from Chicago Stadium on All-Star Saturday along with Rick Barry, Steve Jones. This is Bob Neal. Oh, mercy. He didn't go anywhere but from 15 feet in, but it seemed to be just as impressive, again, because he brought it down real low and then just powered it home. He has so much power. Now, just look at this explosiveness as he takes off right in front of him, the complete 360 wheeler dealer through for a 49. So it's been Jordan with a 50, Wilkins with a 49, Drexler with a 45. There are three dunks in this semifinal round. You think the judges might be thinking they might not be able to get out of here if Jordan doesn't <laughs> win this thing. That was a tremendous effort by Dominique Wilkins. Why do you think I picked Michael Jordan earlier? <laughs> I, I grew up not far from Chicago Stadium. We got to call him their way. 49 for Dominique Wilkins. He's not real happy with that. He would like, of course, to have had a 50. He said he's on a mission to prove he's among the elite of the NBA. I would agree. He, I don't think he needs a mission. I'd like to know who didn't give him a 10 on that one, Dominique. That's what I'd like to know. Now, Michael Jordan with a second of his three dunks in the semifinals. It's nothing new, but again, it's spectacular, and it's front of the home crowd. Well, that's that's what I call the uh, the Chinese Superman dunk, because he kind of flies a little sideways there. He got a little slant to the shot. There he goes. Now he leans in, fires it through with the extension of the arm, and he only got a 48. So obviously the judges are pretty tough this year. They're tough and relatively consistent thus far. Compared to his 50, that might be a 48. That sounds pretty good. Well, when you look at it again, and this is the one that got everybody juiced up a year ago, it looks just as good and looks like a 50 to me. It sure does, Steve. I'll tell you. <laughs> now, that's the one he calls the kiss the rim because he takes his face right up to the rim, ducks it under, and then windmills. He said, previous to this, that he was going to add a twist to that dunk for the competition today. Let's see if he advances, and I think he probably will, if he advances, if he brings it up in the finals. Here's Otis Smith. Well... Otis has really got to be feeling the heat, and now he's got to go to imagination, and let's see what he dreams up. Almost brought that rim down. That rim, by the way, is collapsible. It takes 230 pounds of pressure to make it break loose on the springs that are there for, for it to collapse. Now, remember, he had a miss, so he's not allowed to another one. You see from the slam cam, he didn't quite get it down, hitting the back flange and kicking out, so he cannot replace this dunk as we get another look at it. And he's going to come up probably with a maximum of 25, I would think. No, 22 even. So the judge is really tough today. The judges ought to be up there where that slam cam is, and then they'd get a degree of difficulty that they could appreciate a little bit better. Smith had a good dunk going, but that probably is going to cost him in advance. So for all practical purposes, Jordan, Drexler, and Wilkins are now competing to go to the championship round. Here's Clyde Drexler for his second of three dunks. Now Clyde has got to be a little bit more dramatic in whatever he does this time to really catch the judge's attention. He's been steady. He called King's X, which means he gets <laughs> to do that again. Well, that's like in a pro ball. A run through doesn't count as long as you don't break the plane. So Drexler's going to try again. But now he's in his mind. He's trying to think, I got to come up with something to excite the crowd and the judge. And he's changing his mind coming to the other side of the, the court now. So obviously he's going to try something different. Talking to the crowd. He's got to come up with some sort of 360 and power. And he's going for off the window. Well, that was impressive. He banked it from the left side, dunked it from the right. That was safe, but I don't think it was good enough or dramatic enough for him to get past Jordan or Wilkins. 
wanted to make sure he got something in and at this point if he would have been able to maybe turn Line some way in midair and catch it and throw it in 42. I think he'd have gotten a big score sure throw it up there Steve catch it through a 316 fire it through something we used to do all the time right? <laughs> yeah. <A> 42 <laughs> for Clyde Drexler so Drexler with a 42 on his first dunk in this round Drexler had a 45 so that's Next an 87 thus far there are three dunks in this semifinal round now here comes Dominique Wilkins who was disappointed he was disappointed and the judge has given him a 49 on his first dunk here's a 360 oh what a great shot from the lunar cam too that's right that camera right above the rim well, the heat is on, Rick. With that one, the judges are going to have to respond with their good scores. We look at the, the Luma cam up top, and that ought to give us a real good view of just how Dominique tough Wilkins and powerful scored. Dominique Wilkins is. 47. Oh, he got a 47. He's not going to be happy with that score. 49 the first, 47 on this one. That's, I don't know, I disagree. Well, now I'll tell you, see, he put a little flare after he put the dunk through, but when he went up, he makes the spin move, goes up nice and straight, holds it on his hair, didn't do anything spectacular with the arms. He didn't put as much flare as he normally does into his dunk, Steve, so I would think that score was more indicative of what he had performed as opposed to the last one, which he deserved the 50 on. Well, so that's going to put him into the championship round with Jordan. They get one more dunk. Well, he's got to make sure he just makes the next one. I think the other uh, competitors have basically almost eliminated themselves. Unless Dominique were to miss two of them, uh, he should go in. Same with Michael. Jordan has 98 points. Wilkins, 96. Drexler, 87. Smith, 67. Virtually eliminated. Oh, and uh -oh. there's a miss, but Jordan will get a chance to replace it. But he has got to be careful now because he must make the dunk. Otherwise, the maximum he gets is 25, and that could be costly. That could make the situation resulting in one of the other players to sneak past him. This might open the door for Drexler. I think Smith would have to come up with something awful powerful. That may have closed the door. But it was the semifinal round. They got three dunks each. That was the same dunk he had just missed, and uh, he made a slight adjustment, and you get a look high above now you saw him throw his arm down in there he was making sure he didn't miss that one he got he watched the right hand now up high his hand is there he ducks out of the way now watch him throw it down in through now i tell you, i think 47 is a tough score that was a very impressive dunk i think the judges might be affected by the fact he missed but they're not supposed to be 145 is his total for the three dunks he had his whole arm in there rick he did he had to get, he definitely had to duck his head out of the way of the rim and that's the twist he was talking about putting on that kiss the rim in other words take his head up he, he normally just went in and windmilled it from the side this way he went past the hoop and reversed it that's the twist here's smith All right, Otis Smith in the semifinal round from Chicago Stadium, the 1988 Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship. Along with Rick Barry and Steve Jones, this is Bob Neal. Hope you're enjoying All-Star Saturday. Had an exciting Legends game. 22. Larry Bird won the three-point shootout over Dale Ellis, 17-15. to 15, And now the Slam Dunk Championship's underway. 42 on that one. Well, you know, again, I think the thing for Otis is that he's following Jordan and everything is going to pale by comparison. That's still a powerful opportunity for him, but uh, the middle dunk is really what hurt him. Clyde Drexler, third dunk. Now Clyde came up with a little bit more spectacular opportunity. He 360 and threw it down right in front of the rim, kind of going away, but I don't think that's going to be enough to push him past Jordan or Dominique Wilkins. Now, this is tough. The way he spun, that's the tough way to spin. He's spinning opposite of what your body normally would like to do, and he was still able to throw it through. Uh, he didn't get up as high as he'd like to. It looked like he might have pulled his back a little bit on that spin move. And Drexler gets a 46 to go with his 45, 42, 46 for a total of 133. So thus far, Jordan with 145. Wilkins has 96 coming into this his third dunk of the semifinal round. Needs a 49 to tie Jordan. Started in front and finished on the other side, and we'll see how the judges like it, if that's enough to push him past Drexler. I think he was just making sure that he got a good enough score to make it into the finals. Uh, he really was in a good position. Here you see him bring it up. And again, the double clutch down, back up, and over and through. 
And this is, again, the flair that he has. As he goes up, he's high, all the way back down on the clutch move, past the basket, and then brings it back to the two-hander over the head. Not your routine two-hand two over the hand dunk Michael shot. A little more flair. He does get a 47 to give him 143 for the semifinal round. So the two finalists will be previous champions, the defending champion Michael Jordan with 145 points in the semifinal round, and Dominique Wilkins with 143 points in the semifinals. And this is what the crowd's been waiting for. The championship round, there'll be a coin flip to determine who goes first. I think I'll change my pick. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> but at least my pick is still in there. So Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. This could be good. I wonder if they've saved anything now, for the you, championship well, round. Bob, I think that if Michael's... I mean, if Dominique's going to have a chance to beat Michael, he's going to have to get some kind of a running, floating type of a shot as opposed to just the strict power moves that he's been doing if he expects to beat Michael. All right, Michael Jordan won the coin toss, and he's going to let Dominique Wilkins go first. In a home crowd here, as you take a look at the summary so far, Jordan and Wilkins, who've made it, eliminated were Drexler and Smith. In a home crowd, I might, if I'm Jordan, elect to go first. I'll see what Steve and Rick think about that when we return to Chicago Stadium for the championship round of the Slam Dunks. Welcome back to All-Star Saturday, and what a day it has been. It began with a Legends Classic. A two-point shot by Dave Collins in overtime gave the East the victory. Then in the long-distance shootout, the only two three-point shooters among the league scoring leaders, Dale Ellis and Larry Bird, pressure pack final, Larry Bird the winner. Now the slam dunk championship, the last two winners, two of the last three winners, that is, Dominique Wilkins taking on Michael Jordan. Thanks, Greg Sager. Here's the slam dunk championship. Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins. And I ask you fellas uh, if you thought uh, Jordan should let him go first or not. Well, I think that uh, Jordan probably did the right thing. He's going to put the pressure on Wilkins. And Dominique is going to give a little running start to this one. Not much, though. <laughs> From high above the rim above the rim well out in front i think that that's the key as well as the height how far out in front he caught it when he's able to hammer it home and again he I makes it look like it's routine but watch <laughs> look how far away he is that's a great start for dominique and he's look still going up when he, he caught it right and he stayed up for so long took off from just inside the bottom of that circle and was able to throw it through with authority as he tossed it up from the top of the key we'll watch one more time there he is from the top of the key the perfect toss the perfect timing, and look at he stay up, up, and throws it through with power. And the perfect score of 50 on that dunk from Dominique Wilkins, now the defending champion. Well, now Jordan does have his first taste of pressure in the slam dunk competition. <laughs> I'm predicting a 50 on that. Be hard not to give him 50 on that one, Steve. That was impressive. That time he did the two-hander double clutch as he did look like the kiss the rim type of dunk he'd done before. He got a 50. Well, we're still even as Jordan goes up and takes it way down and then hammers it home over the top. And you'll see from way up high just how difficult it is. And we'll see the Dominique Wilkins reaction. He looks like a heavyweight fighter who's just taken a roundhouse right, and now he's going to set to throw dunk, another one. Round, so that's the second 50 of the day for Michael Jordan, but remember, the, the scores from previous rounds don't advance. This is the championship. Dominique Wilkins and Michael Jordan. That like rattled a, the floor. Like a 45 being shot someplace. That one exploded at the bottom of the net. And that even has the Chicago fans humming because the power that Dominique has. He has more power than any dunker that I've seen play this game with the creativity also going along with it. Here he comes up in the air. Look at the legs. Look at the arms. The windmill and power. He almost lost it. Let's check the judges out after he hit that one. Ooh, they were impressed enough to give him a 50. His second 50 in the three dunk championship competition there is a dunk off in case there's a tie a sudden dunk you, well, you know what he's telling greg anderson yeah that, that that'll get some heat on him now we're gonna we're gonna see what the judges will do now jordan 
for his second. Out of 50 on the first. Oh, look what's going through his mind. He said earlier, sometimes he doesn't decide until he's in the air. Looked like a figure eight with the double clutch. This is much like a heavyweight championship crowd, you know, and they are trading big heavy right punches. Jordan took a long time to think about this, knowing he had to get the judges' attention. 47, oh, 47 was awarded on that dunk. Oh, that is some great creativity, and you notice he's going with the two-hander, Steve, to get a little more power as we watch the reaction of Dominique Wilkins as Michael went in for the dunk, and he just waits to see what the score is. There's another look at that dunk. Now watch when he takes off. Look at the way he moves the ball from the right down low to the left. Two hands and throws it through with authority. These judges are going to need the National Guard to get out of Chicago Stadium. Yeah, it's a hostile, ugly crowd now. <laughs> well, Dominique only needs to come up with a welcome needs to come up with a great dunk here if he gets a 49 or a 48. 49 he can't lose or 40 48. guarantee you he will not get 50 on this dunk. Guarantee. A two-handed windmill, and the judges are going through, their entire lives are flashing in front of their eyes. 47, Michael gets a 50, and it's a dunk off. <laughs> well, we, watch, we watch Dominique Wilkins come in and Dominique again Wilkins with a power and authority low with two hands. And the judges have awarded Dominique Wilkins a 45. That's incredible. <laughs> Could we call it a make good? I mean, that's a two-hand windmill with authority from the sideline. Let's watch this one again. Here he comes, takes off, two hands up, down, around, and through with two hands. Now for Michael Jordan. Here's the story. Wilkins finishes with 145. Michael Jordan needs a 48 to tie, a 49 to win. Hey, you don't think the crowd has some influence on the judges on that last dunk? <laughs> Well, they're on their feet here at Chicago Stadium. Here's another guy that relishes the challenge and pressure, but again, creativity and imagination is the key. Plus, he's got to make the dunk. He needs a 48 to tie, a 49 to win. The defending slam dunk champion, Michael Jordan, if he were to win this, he'd be the only two-time winner in the four-year slam dunk competition. Larry Nance won it, Dominique, Spud Webb, Jordan, and Michael is backing all the way to the middle of the backcourt. Now he's going to the baseline. If he could somehow do some sort of spin on the way to the hoop, Rick, I think I would almost ensure it for him coming this far away. All you need to do is make it from the free throw line like you did before and he'll win. get a replacement he does get a replacement now let's see if the miss influences the judges even if he pulls it off because he took off a little further inside his legs may be getting a bit tired he's had to do a lot of jumping here this afternoon needs a 48 to tie Dominique Wilkins a 49 would win for the second year in a row The fans are all on their feet, or most of them are anyway. Now the only way that he's going to lose this competition is if he misses this dunk. Well, the crowd lets you know what they think of it. Now we will wait for the judges. A 48 ties, a 49. And he took off further inside than he did the last time, but it's still a spectacular dunk and certainly deserving of the high score that he received, Steve. But Dominique Wilkins got the short end of a very impressive dunk. Consistent judging all day until the last two dunks prior to this, the 47 and the 45. A note was passed down to the judges. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chicago. <laughs> the uh, home fan advantage, I think, worked in favor. There's Dominique watching that last dunk. 
Well, it's like figure skating or any kind of gymnastics, any kind of sports where judging comes into play. There are going to be those who believe that Dominique Wilkins had the most spectacular performance today. We're going now to Craig Sager and Dominique Wilkins to find out his reaction. Sound like some microphone problems with Craig Sager. We're going to take a break here, uh, adjust the microphone there, and then we'll have the awarding of the championship trophy to Michael Jordan. Smiling Michael Jordan, who's just been awarded the trophy at center court. He defended the 1987 championship title he held by defeating My uh, Dominique Wilkins in the championship round, and the fans loved it here at Chicago Stadium, but there are going to be arguments all day long. Jordan on the day had 350s, 148, and 447s. Now, they're not cumulative scores, but he had a great day dunking the basketball, Stephen. Well, well, Jordan did have a great day, and as we talked about it during the break, the one area where Jordan got a little, little breakdown was on his second jump dunk in that final competition. He got a low score, and then the George just kind of maybe felt that there was a lot of pressure on him, gave him a big one at the end. Well, they really did, but uh, the, the pressure by the fans, I think, influenced the judges because certainly Dominique's dunk for his last dunk was nowhere near uh, being worse than Michael's where he got a 47 on. Might point out that next year the All-Star Saturday will be in Houston, Clyde Drexler's hometown. We'll watch for that. We'll be back in a moment with an interview with the champion of the 1987 Slam Dunk Championship, Michael Jordan, right after this. Welcome back to All-Star Saturday. It has been a dramatic afternoon. Michael Jordan adding to it the finals for a slam dunk championship sponsored by Gatorade. You had pressure. Yeah, he put a lot of pressure on me, and um, I didn't know exactly what to do. I mean, yeah, 50s are hard to come by, and, and you have to do something unique, actually, to get a 50. And, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't do as unique as he did, and, and I got a 47 after his 50. What about his 45? Do you think that maybe he deserved more? What would you have given him? I would have probably gave him close to a 50. But uh, judging is, is uh, so tough because you, you got to look at the standards of dunks and measure what is a 50 and what is a 45 and that type of a thing. And I thought he had higher than a 45. And when he did get a 45, then I had a chance at least. The home crowd advantage definitely in your favor. I saw you walk around, look up in the stands. You looked at our announcers. What were you thinking? I, mean, I was searching, trying to find something, trying to find something to, to give me a, an idea of what to do. I didn't know what to do. Then all of a sudden, I found the guy who started it all. Dr. J was sitting over there. He was looking at me, and he pointed, like going back go to the, and do the free throw line. And uh, I went back, and I did it. First time, uh, I was kind of scared at first I didn't because I, I, I was putting so much energy into it. And then the second time, I just put so much energy into it, and my, my facial expressions, I think, told the story. Well, it sounds like you lost your voice, but obviously you didn't lose your legs. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Michael Jordan for the second year in a row, winning the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championships. We'll be back to recap All-Star Saturday in just a moment.